Locals began efforts to decolonize Gibraltar as early as 1963. But during the 1980s, the United Kingdom's ambivalence towards the people of the Rock taught them that neither Spain nor the United Kingdom will consistently act in Gibraltar's best interests. On July 12, 2002, British Foreign Secretary Jack Straw made a formal statement in the House of Commons and revealed that the British and Spanish governments had spent the last 12 months negotiating Gibraltar's status. They had found a lasting settlement between them in which both Spain and Britain would share sovereignty of Gibraltar. The problem was that nobody had asked the people of Gibraltar what they wanted. In November of that same year, Gibraltar massively rejected the proposal, with 98.9% of Gibraltarians voting against shared sovereignty. We see no conflict here between being British and being Gibraltarian. Like I said earlier, in the same way as an Englishman is English but is also British, or a Welshman is Welsh but is also British, we, we see no conflict between being, being Gibraltarian and being British. What we do want is to be firmly and finally decolonized. In other words, we want the status of the territory to be resolved. And the, the only way it, in which it can be resolved in this day and age is by the people of the territory deciding freely and democratically whatever it is that they want. We've got a problem with independence which is not the problem identified by the United Kingdom, which is the Treaty of Utrecht of 1713. For us, the problem is the Treaty of Rome of 1954, mm -hmm. which creates the common market, now known as the European Union. Mm -hmm. Because we are the only colony that actually joined the European Union with the United Kingdom. But as a British colony, if we cease to have the United Kingdom handling our foreign affairs, we automatically cease to be members of the European Union under that particular clause in the treaty. If that were to happen, we would then have to reapply for entry and Spain, who is already a member, would be able to veto our entry because it requires unanimity. So therefore, <laughs> it's an option we don't particularly want to test. And they've been vetoing everything. They've vetoed everything else. There are three traditional ways in which a colony can get off the list and become decolonized. You need to have the maximum level of self-government, and then you can either choose independence, which is what most colonies did, you can choose free association, and then the third one is integration, whereby a colony can choose to integrate and become part of the mother country. So we could choose to become part of the United Kingdom. The United Nations' three options for decolonization had been effective in many cases, but Gibraltar gradually learned that their situation was unique. The first of three unavailable options for Gibraltar is independence. The Treaty of Utrecht, signed in 1713, clearly states that if the British Crown should ever decide to give up sovereignty over Gibraltar, it would automatically revert to Spain. The Spanish view is that independence is prohibited because the Treaty of Utrecht, which ceded the U Gibraltar to the UK forever, um, has a reversion clause which says when the UK doesn't want it, then we have first choice, Spain has first choice. The, the, the UK and Spain use that to deny us independence. We don't accept that it's valid. I mean, the people of the Parliament of Gibraltar don't accept that it's valid. Integration doesn't seem to be an option for Gibraltarians either. The last thing the majority wants to do is give in to Spain and the United Kingdom doesn't appear to have interest in fully integrating Gibraltar. You see, if we don't want to be a part of Spain, then people must be consistent in their beliefs, you know? If you don't want me, and I don't want to be a part of you, and you make me feel unwanted, then I choose not to visit you. And we are all sufficiently well off in this place to be able to go to Orlando for our holidays without having to go to Seville. We have lived here for 300 years. Spain has a territorial claim on our homeland. They're saying it belongs to them. We, we, we're saying it doesn't belong to them, it belongs to us. We're the people who live, who live here, and we have been for 300 years. Our historical evolution has been separate and distinct to that of Spain. Our evolution, our way of life, our political development, our social development, our cultural development was separate and distinct to that of Spain. I mean, they had the Civil War, for example. We had World War II. They didn't take part in World War II. So, but this goes back 300 years. It's 300 years of a separate history and a separate tradition. And it has to be understood in that way. The UK doesn't come quite come into the equation quite as much as Spain does, because at the end of the day, I think we all know, and those of us that don't should know by now, that the UK would quite happily be shot at us. Gibraltar is little more than an irritant for the UK. I mean, Anglo-Spanish relations are a huge world far more important than 30,000 people on a lump of rock 
uh, and we are getting in the way of what could be smoother relations between the UK and Spain. The UK ha has let Gibraltar down on many occasions politically. We have been dealt blow after blow by successive British political blows by successive British governments and that sort of begins to detach you from the sense of allegiance. A lot of people now you know, in Janito will sort of say, well, you're not here and I go English, which is, you know, I want nothing to do with the British. And that's, it's becoming a, a more common refrain nowadays in Gibraltar, whereas before to say that would have been tantamount to treachery in Gibraltar. But nowadays people say, hang on, they're giving us as many, you know, political blows as the, as the Spanish side are, you know, who's our friend here, you know. Free association, the third option, is also an appealing to Gibraltar, given Spain and Britain's inconsistent behavior towards the rock. Free association or a form of free association, a status which involves retaining our links with the United Kingdom, which involves um, re retaining our position within the European Union, but which is decolonized and whereby we would cease to be a non-self-governing territory, which is what we are, and where we are ranked in legal terms, we are a non-self-governing territory. The only problem with free association as I see it is that free association is a breakable relationship which can be broken by either party. So if the UK feel under political pressure from Spain, the EU or whoever to break that relationship, then they can do it overnight. Given their strained relationships with both Britain and Spain, it was evident that none of these three routes would be favorable for Gibraltar. In 1971, there was a subsequent decision of the UN which recognized that there were territories that might have difficulty in fitting into any of those three mod modules. The UN came up with what is known as a fourth option, and that allows for a, for a colony to be decolonized through a tailor-made status. In other words, we choose freely and democratically a tailor-made solution to our particular circumstances, because they thought the territories that were left were too small to be straight jacketed into independence, integration or free association. So basically most people here are going for this fourth option, which involves a tailor-made solution to the Gibraltar question, freely and democratically chosen by the people of the territory. And therefore the 1971 change, which has never been used by anybody, has been the one that we think is where the future of Gibraltar lies. The fourth option allows you to find a tailor-made solution, even if it is a free association solution, maybe whereby you cannot disassociate yourself, or, or whether you can find a tailor-made status within the parameters of Gibraltar. All these different factors that are important to us, but we, run, but we run the show, as it were, completely. In 2006, after seven years of negotiation with the United Kingdom, Gibraltar published a new constitution as an act of self-determination which declared them to finally be decolonized. On the next Gibraltar National Day, 30,000 balloons were released into the air, symbolically representing independence for each inhabitant of the rock. Believing themselves to be decolonized, the future looked bright for the people of Gibraltar. However, time began to show the world that the United Nations, heavily influenced by the interests of Spain and Britain, refused to recognize Gibraltar's independence. The United Nations has a list of 16 colonies. We are, we are on the list, despite the new constitution that we had uh, in 2006. So there are 16 territories on the list, most of them are British. When, when we joined that committee that drew up the constitution, both uh, Joe Bosano and myself, we did so on the basis that this was going to decolonize Gibraltar. This constitution was going to achieve that under the fourth option. Mm -hmm. And all the members, including the government members, signed up to it on that basis. In the course of, the nego of negotiating that document with the United Kingdom, there were certain things that were watered down or where wording was changed and became, became rather, rather ambivalent, which before had been rather precise wording. And obviously the UN is also very heavily influenced by the UK and by Spain, this committee of 24, and really they tend to look after the interests of the claimant powers or the colonial power rather than the interests of the colonial people, which is what the mandate is. We drew up a constitution, we submitted it to the UK, the UK entered into negotiations. This took from 1999 until 2006. It took years, it should never have taken so long. And when it was finally agreed in 2006, the UK recognized our referendum to approve it as an act of self-determination. What wasn't very clear is what the consequences of that were going to be, and whether we were now going to be removed from the list of colonies and whether our status in international law was going to change. But what seems to have 
emerged is that our status, our international status, is the same now as it was before.